Good Morning Adventurers. Dawn has broken on another Disney day. Unfortunately, this is our last. So we're just getting the bags packed. The rest of the guys are back at the room. We're just getting our bags packed and then we're gonna move them over to bag store, who in turn will take it over to the train station for us a little bit later on. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a tour around Santa Fe this morning, give you a bit of a wayfinding and then we'll go from there. So we start outside the main entrance to Santa Fe. So there's the main entrance board with McQueen and Sally above. You've got the reception just round to the right hand side and the park bus, which is just rolled in. We'll drop guests off on the right hand side as we stand. And if you're going to the park, it's over there to the left hand side. So just over to the left there, you've got bag store. So you can leave your bags as you arrive and on the day you leave um, to make things easier. Just at the main gates there, to the left, there is a petrol station and you have got an opportunity to get some cheaper food and drink than park prices. It's just a tip to remember as you leave um, just by the entrance gates there, make sure you take your park or your room tickets with you because they will ask to see them on the way back in. So bus, bags, main entrance, reception, bus drop off, petrol station, really straightforward. Okay, so we're in the main reception now. So you've got the reception desks on the right hand side there. And then on the left hand side, you've got an information area. On the left hand side, if you checked in online, that's where we were checked in. They had all of our details already. And then just further around to the left is the meet and greet area for characters, which varies in times and day. So it's important to understand uh, when they are ask a reception when you arrive to get an idea of that it looks like they alternate between Cheyenne and Santa Fe So next up we've got Starbucks So it's a relatively small Starbucks. However, they do seem to get people served relatively quickly The opening times are 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. So decent times for that So this is still part of the reception area great theming with the roadway down the middle and then some fantastic artwork up on the walls. The toilets within the reception are just there on the right hand side. They serve the restaurant, the bar and any of the other communal areas. So your reception area, Starbucks, things like that. So they can get quite busy, um, but yeah, that's where they are nice and straightforward to find. Up next on the left hand side is the trading post, which is the shop. So it's a decent sized shop and what we find obviously we run the Disneyland Paris pickups page what we find is that the hotel shops have these in stock um, so it's definitely worthwhile having a look around some of the hotel shops for merch that may be sold out within the parks so as we come around here right hand side you've got the bar area which continues into La Cantina so the entrance to La Cantina is just a little bit further round back through this way so this is the breakfast buffet for anybody staying at Santa Fe and also uh, La Cantina is the Tex-Mex buffet for the evening. So we ate here on night one, so check out the video from night one if you want to check that out. But that's it, so dead straightforward through there. And obviously there's videos on the page of the inside of La Cantina. So there is another entrance to La Cantina and it's just off the main road. So down there where that golf cart thing is, is where we stood with the Hotel Santa Fe sign. If you come through there and turn right, you will come down this way to the rear entrance for La Cantina. There's also another entrance for the trading post and Starbucks in this location. So the Sally rooms are the furthest away from the direction you need to travel if you're going to walk to the park um, but it is kind of the closest to the facilities so this area here is Sally and then as we spin round there's the entrance to La Cantina so nice and local for the facilities a little bit further if you're planning on walking to the park so within the Sally area there is a little bit of theming uh, so it's a volcano which is smoking 
it's a little bit of theme and it fits with the theme it's nothing spectacular however if you're staying in this area it is a little bit something extra that the other areas don't have so at night the decorative finish at the head of each of the buildings is lit up from the back which looks really effective and each block has its own number um, so that's Sally 50 you have got some areas that are upstairs so if you do have anybody with mobility issues make sure it is listed before you arrive so they can designate you with a room on the ground floor level we're on the ground floor at the minute and it's no issues at all so there are plenty of parking spaces here at Santa Fe. This is just one small parking area to service the Sally building we've just looked at. However, when we have been before, these car parks can get really busy. So we did stay at Cheyenne uh, a couple of years ago and it was absolutely rammed. There was people parked everywhere. So depending upon how busy it is, you may find if you're self-driving, car parking may become an issue. So this is the first one of these I've seen, which is snacks. It's only a vending machine, but after a long day in the parks, it may come in handy. So the one thing I haven't seen here at Santa Fe, and somebody in the comments below correct me, if I am wrong, there isn't any electrical electric vehicle charging points, which is quite interesting with the direction of things uh, that, that they're heading. So um, if you are driving an electric vehicle, it may be worth checking that out before you arrive. So we're currently in the McQueen area. In terms of the facades externally, nothing changes between area to area, but the theme in between rooms in some locations is really good where you've got the tarmac roads, the street lighting and things like that. So theming wise, really good. So this is Mater, this is where we're staying. Okay, so we're right at the bottom of Santa Fe now. And I don't know if you can hear that in the background. That's the music from Cheyenne. So it's Woody's Roundup playing and Cheyenne is just over there, which is over the river. There are new, normally two bridges that take you over between Santa Fe and Cheyenne. However, one of them is currently under refurbishment. And just to give you an idea of where we are, there's the main entrance straight up that way. So dotted amongst the rooms, or the room blocks should I say, there are hot drink vending machines and as part of your package for staying here you get four free drinks per person per night um, so definitely take advantage of those. So this gives you an idea of what the corridors and internal areas look like. I'm being a little bit quieter because obviously people will still be in these rooms but it just gives you an idea of what you're looking at. So we're currently in building 33 this is the coffee machine and tap on and then press what you want. So they're nothing special, however, grabbing one on the way back from or to the park may be the difference, especially in the cold weather that we're kind of experiencing at the moment. So to the bottom left as you walk down Santa Fe, that is the bridge just over there. It's a 15 minute walk from the hotel to the parks, so definitely worth doing. And also then you do security as you enter the village and it tends to be a little bit quieter there than it does from the train station into the village. So it's definitely worth walking in my opinion. So in summary, would I stay at Santa Fe again? Yes, definitely. Most of the time, this is just somewhere to get your head down at night after a long day in the park, so why wouldn't you? Um, it's a little bit tired in places, don't get me wrong. Don't come here expecting the Ritz, but for the money, it's definitely worth it. So would we stay here again? Yes, could it do with a little bit of a refurbishment? Yes, but it will come in time. So I'm gonna collect the rest of the guys and we're gonna head off to breakfast now. Probably not gonna do a huge vlog from the park today. We'll see you when we get down there. I don't know what we plan to do, so I don't know whether it's gonna be worth vlogging or not. We'll see. So yeah, we'll see you in the parks a little bit later on. So luggage labels are on, ready to drop these off at the bag store, and then Disney will take these over to the train station for us. So our time here at Santa Fe has sadly come to an end. We've dropped our bags off, we've had breakfast. We're just about to leave the room now and head down to the parks overall 
more than happy to stay here again um, for the value getting the perks of on-site against off-site and having the option to add some form of meal plan on definitely works in favor for our party so yeah more than happy with that we'll see you in the parks in a little while There's quite a few characters out this morning. We've just met Eeyore, watched the back end of the parade as it headed back up to the top of Main Street, and now Geppetto and Pinocchio are out. So I'm going to uh, get some footage of that and take some photos of the girls in the group who are going to meet them. So the queue for Geppetto and Pinocchio didn't really move, so we jumped out of it. We're heading over to Princess Pavilion to see who we can see today. <laughs> Good morning. So whilst we were still queuing, we did see Cinderella and Aurora enter the Princess Pavilion and we met Aurora yesterday. So we asked if Cinderella was in and Cinderella was in. So we got diverted around to that side, which was brilliant. So we've met Cinderella this morning and we're going to carry on heading around the park, looking at the low wait times. It's a bit busier today than it has been. So yeah, low wait times and we'll do some more rides as we go. So Jacob and Sam have just gone to ride Indiana Jones on um, Premier Access, five euros each, and it's broken down. So they've just closed the ride, and there's people stuck at the top, there's people stuck at the bottom. So it doesn't look like it's gonna be up and running anytime soon. So we'll see what happens. I assume we'll just get a refund straight back for the Premier Access, but uh, yeah, at the moment, there's one up there, there's one down there. So just down at Cowboy Cookout, there's a meet and greet with Minnie Mouse. We're going to quickly jump and do that and then head over further round, probably over to Phantom Manor next. Okay, so Pizzeria Bella Not for our final meal of our full board meal plan. So choice of pizza and pasta here. We're going for the Mickey pizzas again, similar to day one. So we'll finish the trip off with a Mickey pizza, pepperoni, garlic bread, drink, and a premium Mickey ice cream bar. So we're just about to head into the train station to collect our bags and then head off down to the train tracks once the platform is announced. But we left the park and there was a Mickey shortbread. So we had to get that. Stick it in the bag for later. There it is, that's what we had to queue for. So our bags got brought here to Disney Express. And to give you an idea where that is, Right down there, right at the front, is the exit directly to the uh, security checks of Disney. And we have then walked up and along this way and up to the back corner. You can't miss it, to be fair. There it is, Mickey and the Disney Express. So we said we'd do a little bit of an update regarding um, full board meal plan and whether it was worth it or not. Our total spends for four adults through the till at Disney 
was 1,464 euros. So converted, that is 1,200-ish pounds. Well, I think it's 1,280 and we paid 1,200 pounds. So it was 80 pounds cheaper to do the full, full board meal plan. Was it worth it? Yeah. It's all paid for up front, so you don't have to think when you're here, oh my God, how much am I spending? It is a lot of food. So in some instances, for some families, for some particular picky eaters, it may not be worth it. But for us, it certainly is. We would do it again, but maybe only half board. But you get loads of choices of places to eat. Um, the quick service meals were large. Ordinarily, me and Sam would share one of those. So if we weren't on the meal plan, we would have shared one. So catch 22 really but I'd definitely do it again but if you have got uh, people with small appetites it's definitely worthwhile considering whether doing it or not but for us having it all paid for up front makes it more worthwhile and then because realistically we've spent hardly anything since we've been here we bought, bought two spirit jerseys and that's about it and um, we've not spent any money on food or drink really a couple of bottles of pop and that's about it so yeah definitely consider it in our view it's definitely worthwhile doing so the only other thing I wanted to briefly talk about before heading off back home was the pregnancy pass that we got. So the pregnancy pass was like the easy access card. So that entitles um, the pregnant person plus four people accompanying to any of the attractions and character meets. So we did that a few times um, and also two people to accompany them to any of the shows so we were a group of four so we just split it um, and so one person was on their own and and etc etc so it's definitely worthwhile doing so ordinarily you'd get a return time to go back to the attraction but because the parks have been relatively quiet we only had that once and it was because phantom mickey was going backstage before um coming back out so we got told to come back in 10 minutes and by that time he'd gone and he'd just about come back so um, if you're entitled to it definitely do it you can also take along as many children so the accompanying people the four and the two is only adults so you can take along as many children as you want so if you're entitled to it definitely use it um, it's been a bit of a perk for us this time but it wasn't necessarily needed because the parks were relatively quiet so um, I'm going to do a bit of time traveling now watch this so that's it another trip to Disneyland Paris over a uh, brilliant trip really quiet it has been a little bit cold and there has been a few things down for maintenance but obviously as to be expected of this time of year would i come back this time of year again most certainly would i come back and stay at santa fe definitely would i come back and do full board probably um we'll do a little bit more in terms of the board thing a little bit later on but yeah really impressed really happy and disney have definitely upped their food game since we were last here so it makes the um the full board option seem a little bit more um appetizing should we say so yeah really happy and um, we're gonna head off into the train station shortly go and grab our bag so we'll put a little bit well you will have seen a little bit of footage of that but i thought i'd wrap the vlog up from the park because it's the most fitting place to be so yeah we'll see you in the next one i think the next trip is a little dog vacation out to the coast i don't know where we're staying sam booked it but somewhere to take the dog in a cottage somewhere so we'll probably take you along for that and then we've got a disney cruise later on this year so we'll take you to that we're going to bilbao uh, sailing from southampton and then we've also got a center parks trip booked as well so we'll take you for the journey with that so thank you for following and we'll see you in the next adventure.